Hey there, I'm Mike from Arcol, and for this tutorial we're going to be creating your first project and learning some of the basics of Arcol. So after you've logged in using your work email to app.arcol.io, uh, it'll send you a password to log in. You're going to get this project browser page and obviously you won't have any projects yet. There'll just be a button right here that says create new project. Uh, to create a new project you can click that button or up in the top right here, there's this purple new project button. So I'm going to click that. That's going to load you into a blank empty project. And just to give you a bit of an orientation, so on the left here, you have boards, which we'll get to later. Here's where all of your model views are. There's a couple defaults. Uh, here's your design options. You start uh, in a design option by default. Here's your tools across the top. And then on the right, you have all of your metrics. And in this other tab, you've got some settings for your views. So the first thing we're going to do in a new project is import our site context. And to do that, you click this set project location button in the right sidebar. That'll open up this map here. And from there, you can search your site location by address, lat long, or postal code. Uh, or you can just click on the map. Now this purple box here, that's showing how much site context you're going to import. And you can adjust that up to two miles of context if you're doing imperial units, um, or I think that's about five kilometers if you're using metric. You can also change what style of the map image you want to bring in by clicking on this uh, button over here. And if you're in a US location, you can click this box to use regrid, and I'll show you what that does in a second. Uh, the last option you can do here is choose to bring in your terrain, your topography as 3D, that's the default, or flat. Just a note here, if you bring in your terrain as flat, you won't be able to go back to 3D later. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you check the regrid box, you're gonna have this next button show up, and if you click it, then your next screen will show you all the property boundaries for where you're choosing your site. And so you can just click on whatever the property boundaries are for your site. You can click, click, click as many as you want within that site context box that you're seeing here. And <clears throat> if you have sites that are beside each other that you want to combine, you can check this box to merge site boundaries. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and click the save button. And that will import all of your site here. <clears throat> To navigate around your scene, you can right click and drag to orbit, and you can hold shift and right click to pan. And then to zoom, you can use your track wheel. You can also pan by clicking your track wheel and dragging if you're using a mouse. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is select the building that's on our site, the existing building, and press delete to remove it. And now we have our site boundary uh, ready to go. Now, if this site doesn't exist, if, you're, you, um, if you chose a site that's outside of the US, I'll just remove this here, um, instead you're going to see this draw site boundary button. And so click the button, you can draw your site manually to wherever that should go. And once you close the loop, you will have your site. So that's the other way of, of creating a site boundary. Um, okay, so from here, we're gonna add some setbacks to our site. So if you click and select your site, here in the right, it'll say site one, and you can click on this setback section, click on the plus button to add a setback. By default, the setbacks are 10 feet, but you can click on any of these to change it to whatever you want. So if I have a rear setback of say 20 feet, I can do that there. You can also add a height to your setback to create a site envelope. And as you can see, once I do that, I now have a volume that I can design inside of. So that's setting up your site. To create a building, it works similar to some other tools you may have used. So let's click the line tool here. Everything in Arcola has hotkeys, which you'll see in the dropdowns beside the tools. And we can snap to our site boundary that we just created, or sorry, our setback. And um, once you create a closed loop, 
go ahead and, and create whatever building you want. But once you close the loop, you will get a surface that shows up here. Now when you're done, you can either click the Done button to stop sketching, or you can press Escape. And just a note about Arcol, everything is editable after you create it. So if I need to make changes to this sketch I just created, I can select it and click on the Edit button that shows in the middle of the menu, or I can just double click on it and I can make adjustments there. Um, now, to turn this into a building, I'm going to use my push-pull tool up here. And I'm just going to click and drag up into an extrusion. And again, similar to other tools you may have used, you can push-pull any of those sides to adjust things. And like I just mentioned, if I need to edit uh, the sketch that went into this, I can double click on this and adjust the sketch, which will affect the extrusion as well. Okay, the final step to turning this into a building is to select the extrusion you just made. And in the right sidebar here, look at the floor section and click that plus. Now that's going to split the extrusion into floors and now it's been it's called building, so we know it's been turned into a building. And that'll let us set the exact amount of floors, uh, the exact floor to floor height. Um, and it, you can also adjust these things individually. So if I want the main floor to be a little bit taller, I can click on the side of that floor and where it says floor one here, um, I can set the height of just that floor to say 16 feet if I want to. Um, one other tip is that you can add or remove floors with the push-pull tool. So that's an option for you as well. Okay, last thing we're gonna do for this tutorial is we're going to assign some functions to this building. So if I select the building, I get I have this function section in the right sidebar. Here's the defaults in Arcol, and we'll get into how you can create your own custom functions later in other videos, but for this, we're going to make it residential. And if I press escape to deselect the building, now I get my metrics sidebar again, and I see here, I can see how much site coverage that building is occupying and what the square footage of residential is, that typology or that function that I just assigned. I'm also getting the facade area. Efficiency is 100% because I don't have any corridors drawn yet and it's calculating the FAR for me. So that's the basics of Arcol. We're gonna go more into detail around parking and metrics and other things in future videos, but um, Good job creating your first project and your first building.